Senior NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski. Woj, what's the latest you're hearing on where Bronny could be taken today? Uh, Jay, the, the Lakers have been, you know, certainly they've spent a lot of time considering uh, how best that they could uh, bring Bronny James into the NBA, develop him. That was a large part of their conversations with Dan Hurley at UConn, uh, bringing, him, bringing his player development program to the Lakers. And that conversation has certainly continued with uh, J.J. Redick. You know, part, part of this for the Lakers is they take pride in with their legacy players, like a Kobe Bryant and now like a LeBron James, of doing right by them. It was for Kobe Bryant, a very big contract, very late in his career. And, and I think what they want is to take care of their legacy players and show future players who they might want to recruit to L.A. This is how we are going to treat you. So there's certainly a lot lining up uh, for Bronny James and the Lakers at number 55. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, the Knicks, Woj, have been one of the more active teams leading up to the draft and during the draft so far. What can you tell us about what is next for them? Well, the, the Knicks had a 24 hours unlike any in, in certainly recent history uh, of this organization, trading for Mikel Bridges with the Nets, giving up five first-round picks for him, and then re-signing OG Ananobi, uh, or certainly getting an, a commitment from him. Uh, that he's going to resign uh, July 6th. Biggest contract in Nick history. Five years, $212.5 million, we reported last night. And uh, those are two players you look over the last six months. Ananobi was a trade with Toronto prior to the trade deadline, and now Bridges. Uh, they bring him in uh, to add to their Villanova core. And this is a team in New York now who very much have their sights set on the Celtics. And they're certainly loading up at a position, you know, that wing position that you've got to be able to take the Celtics on with Jalen Brown and, of course, Jason Tatum. Uh, listen, they would love to be able to keep Isaiah Hartenstein, their center. He's an unrestricted free agent. It's going to be difficult financially for New York to do so. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think there's some big deals uh, out there for Hartenstein. He had an outstanding season for the Knicks, uh, but they still have Mitchell Robinson and, you know, this has become a very deep and talented Knicks team. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Also, one of the big decisions that we're waiting on is what's going to happen with Paul George. He has a player option for next season. What are you hearing about when he could decide on his future? Well, he's got to decide on that player option by Saturday. Free agency starts uh, on Sunday night. And so, listen, the options for Paul George is he opts out. He becomes a free agent. He could re sign a new deal with the Clippers. He can go sign in a salary cap space elsewhere, or he can opt into the deal and work with the Clippers on finding a destination uh, where they could get some value back for him. Uh, but there are a number of teams with the space available or the ability to create the space uh, to take on Paul George. You know, I'm told he's seeking a four-year uh, deal, certainly a four-year max deal. Teams like Philadelphia, who's certainly going to be in pursuit uh, Orlando, even teams like San Antonio have the space if they want to get involved in this. And so I think for Paul George, the decision is going to come down to, and I think he's loved being with the Clippers, there's a new salary cap reality. And right now the Clippers, you know, they have talked with Paul George about a three-year deal. Uh, they have not gone to a fourth year. He'd be 37 years old, making $50 million plus. And lots of teams in the NBA are going to be faced with this reckoning with older players in the league with the new salary cap and so ultimately that's a decision Paul George is going to have have to make.